continue from thermal analysis we have already discussed various uh, techniques techniques come under the heading of the thermal analysis thermal analysis techniques and method thermal gravimetric analysis differential thermal analysis differential scanning calorimetry dynamic mechanical analysis thermomechanical analysis and thermometric titration already we discussed two techniques thermogravimetric analysis tga differential thermal analysis dta now in this lecture we will discuss the differential scanning calorimetry dsc let's see the background of dsc differential scanning calorimetry is one of the thermoanalytical technique all the thermal analysis are the thermoanalytical techniques a calorimeter measures the heat into or out of the same system out of a sample a differential calorimeter measures the heat of sample relative to a reference sample relative to reference is a differential differential means a difference the calorimeter that measures the difference between sample and the reference this is a differential calorimeter the differential scanning calorimetry does all the above and heat sample with a linear temperature ramp dsc is a technique in which the difference in the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of the sample and reference are measured as a function of temperature but the sample and the reference are maintained at nearly the same temperature throughout the experiment so in this technique uh, we all are uh, all everything is uh, uh, moving around the heat it means the heat content of a system when we talking about the heat content of the system so this heat content of the system is the enthalpy so what is the enthalpy so enthalpy is the thermodynamic quantity equivalent to heat content of the system so the principle of dsc is DSC is used to measure the enthalpy changes due to the changes in the physical and chemical properties of a material as a function of temperature or time. So it is all related to the heat content and heat content indirectly related to the enthalpy and enthalpy is related to thermodynamic properties, the thermodynamic functions. So enthalpy is a thermodynamic function. Let's discuss about the instrumentation of DSC. There are mainly two different type of DSC instruments: heat flux DSC, <coughs> power compensated DSC. Let's firstly the instrumentation of heat flux DSC. This is a block diagram for DSC operators. DSC heat flux operators, sample and reference holders. These are the parts of this heat flux DSC instrument. Aluminium or heat pan placed on constantan disc. Copper nickel alloy, no, also known as Eureka. What is constantan disc is made of copper and nickel alloy. This is also called the Eureka. Eureka. It usually consists of 55% of copper and 45% of nickel. Sample and reference holders are connected to a low resistance. Here is a block diagram at the right side of this block diagram. We have a lid that is covered the whole the system, the whole uh, furnace you can say in other words. And the sample pan, chromal disc, chromal wire. And the left is a lumel wire, the right side bottom heating block, uh, one is thermocouple junction, thermoelectric disc, constantum, reference pan and purge gas inlet. Uh, you all the familiar with the purge gas, we, uh, we will use, can use different type of gases in DSC also, nitrogen, uh, organ, carbon dioxide and etc. And thermocouple is a sensor that measures the difference of temperature between two objects. Object means the reference and the sample. The sensors in the DSC instrument, the chromel, an alloy made of 90% nickel and 10% chromium, constant on area thermocouples, differential heat flow. Heat flow means difference of heat between two objects mean one objective sample other is reference chromal alumel 
an alloy consisting of approximately 95% nickel, 2% manganese, 2% aluminium, and 1% silicon. This type of the, uh, this is also a thermocouple that measure the difference of temperature between two objects that is measure the sample temperature. Thermocouple is a junction between two different metals that produce a voltage due to the temperature difference. Now the furnace one block for the both sample and reference cells is called the furnace. The holder means two object holder in DS instrument is the furnace. Temperature controller the temperature difference between the sample and the reference is converted to differential thermal power which is applied to the heaters to maintain the temperature of the sample and the reference at the program value. Heat flux DSC. In heat flux DSC, the difference in heat flow into the sample and the reference is measured while the sample temperature is changed at constant rate. That is fixed in temperature program. Uh, the main assembly of DSC cell is enclosed in a cylindrical silver heating block which dissipates heat to the specimen via or constant disc which is attached to the silver block. The disc has two raised platform on which the sample and reference pans are placed. This is evident from this block diagram. The raised one is sample pan, other is reference pan. A chromal disc and con connect and connecting wire are attached to the un uh, underside of each platform, and resulting chromal constant thermocouples are used to determine the differential temperature of interest. Alumel wires attached to the chrome disc provide the chromal alumel junction for independently measuring the sample and the reference temperature. A separate thermocouple embedded in the silver block serves as a temperature controller for the programmed heating cycle and, and inert gas is passed through the cell at a constant flow rate of about 40 ml per minute. This is a purging gas. That, uh, the purging gas depends upon the nature of the sample, which type of gas we have to purge. For example, any nitrogen, it may be nitrogen, maybe carbon dioxide, maybe argon, so and so on. Uh, the other type of DSC is power compensation DSC. So the same, this is a very simple equipment comparative to high flux DSC. Sample holder aluminium or platinum pans. Two pans can be seen from the block diagram. One pan is for the sample, other other pan for the reference. Similarly, this also have the sen sensor. The sensor used uh, for the measurement of the temperature. Platinum resistant thermocouples. Separate sensors are heated for the sample and the reference. Block diagram you can see the sample and reference pan are placed on a heat sink. And that, what is the heat sink? Heat sink is a passive heat exchanger that transfer heat generated by electronic device or fluid medium. So this is an electronic device. So this is uh, this heat sink serve as a heat exchanger. Again, the furnace separate block for the sample and reference cells. Temperature controller supply the differential thermal power to the heater to maintain the temperature of the sample and reference at the program value. In power compensation DSC, the temperature of the sample and reference and uh, are kept equal to each other while the both temperature are, are increased or decreased lin linearly, mean in a linearity way, mean uh, in a linearity way. The power needed to maintain the sample temperature equal to the reference temperature is measured. In power compensation DSC, two independent heating units are employed. These heating units are quite small, allowing for rapid rates of heating, cooling, and equilibrium. The heating units are embedded in a large temperature control heat sink. As I already told you, what is the heat sink? Heat sink is a, basically a heat exchanger. Differential scanning calorimetry, uh, the sample and reference holder have platinum resistant thermometers to continuously monitor the temperature of the material. Both sample and reference are maintained at the program temperature by applying power to the sample and the reference heaters.
द इंस्ट्रूमेंट रिकॉर्ड द पावर डिफरेंस नीडेड टू मेंटेन द सैंपल एंड रेफरेंस एट द सेम टेम्परेचर एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ प्रोग्राम टेम्परेचर पावर कंपनसेटेड डी एस सी हैज लोअर सेंसिटिविटी देन हीट फ्लक्स डी एस सी बट इट्स रिस्पॉन्स टाइम इज मोर रेपर्ड बट इन मॉडर्न अनालिसिस यूजली हीट फ्लक्स डी एस सी आर यूज बिकॉज मोर सेंसिटिविटी इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द अनालिसिस इन क्वालिटी कंट्रोल लैब्स so the calibration of any analytical instrument is vitally important to get reliable accurate and precise results so so in any analytical instrument baseline correction is a uh, have a uh, prime importance in analytical instruments baseline is output response uh, is an output response at no input to the instrument so this has a uh, a uh, prime importance in any type of analytical in instrument to get reliable accurate and precise results in dsc instrument baseline correction is done in the way uh, evaluation of the thermal resistance of the sample and the reference sen sensors measurement over the temperature range of interest so there are two steps in uh, involved in the baseline correction number 1 the temperature difference of two empty crucibles is measured mean one crucible is for the sample and other crucible is for the reference material the thermal response is then acquired for a standard material usually is fire on both the sample and the reference platform to uh, to get the zero baseline uh, difference between uh, two crucibles Uh, amplified dsc signal is automatically varied with the temperature to maintain a constant calorimetric sensitivity with the temperature so this is a graph uh, to assess the baseline correction uh, in this uh, uh, graph you can see there is zero line one is baseline interpolated and other is peak that is exothermic peak that uh, we already discussed the maxima and minima Uh, the maxima is the exothermic while the minima is the endothermic in any kind of dsc curves so for the calibration of dsc instrument uh, the the importance of temperature is uh, vitally the goal is uh, in case of temperature the goal is to match the melting onset temperatures indicated by the furnace thermocouple read out to the known melting points of standard analyzed by the dsc it should be calibrated as close as possible to desired temperature ranges and number 2 is the heat flow use of calibration standards of known heat capacity such as fire slow accurate heating rates 0.5 to 2.0 centigrade per minute and similar sample and reference pan weights when we are talking about the calibration of dsc instrument we have to need a calibrants which kind of calibrants we need for the calibration of dsc instruments the calibrant should have a following characteristics following properties the calibrant must have high purity these are accurately known enthalpies these should be thermally stable and also along with the uh, thermally stable these should be Uh, light stable these must be non hygroscopic unreactive mean unreactive with pan and uh, any other atmosphere in the furnace when we are talk about the calibrants uh, if we want to measure the dsc uh, measure the metals uh, characteristics by using the dsc instruments then we have to uh, use various type of metal for the calibration of the dsc instruments uh the cali among the calibrants if we are talking about the metal the metal should be indium it can be stannous it can be aluminium if we want to run uh, inorganic material by dsc instrument the among the inorganic calibrants uh, it it may be uh, potassium nitrate potassium perchlorate if we want to run the organics analysis by dsc instruments Uh, among the organic cal uh, calibrants it may be polystyrene benzoic acid and it might it may be anthracene now the sample preparation in differential scanning calorimetry accurately weighed 
the sample about 3 to 20 milligram the sample material and configuration should be used for sample and the reference material should completely cover the bottom of of the pan to ensure good thermal contact good thermal contact mean it uh, completely acquired the temperature that is programmed As a result of DSC analysis, we get a data in the form of graph. That graph is called the DSC curve. The result of a DSC experiment is curve of heat flux versus temperature or time. There are two different convention exothermic reactions in the sample show the, with a positive or negative peak depending upon the kind of technology used in the experiment. Uh, this curve can be used to calculate the enthalpy of the transitions which is done by integrating the peak responding to a given transition. Enthalpy of transition can be expressed using equation delta H is equal to Ka. Where delta is the enthalpy of the transition, K is a calorimetric constant and A is the area under the peak. The calorimetric constant varies from instrument to instrument and can be determined by analyzing a well characterized material for known enthalpy of transition. The area under the peak is directly proportional to the heat absorbed or evolved by the reaction. Heat of a uh, height of a peak is directly proportional to the rate of the reaction from the graph you can say. Uh, in the last lecture in DTA we are discuss about the maxima and minima of the curve but in this in also in dca curve dsc curve we have to uh, in this uh, presented graph we have a maxima and minima the minima represented the endothermic peak the endothermic peak the max while the maxima represent exothermic peak in endothermic peak usually uh, heat is absorbed while in case of exothermic peak heat is released Various factors affect the DSC curve. Two types of factors affect the DSC curve. Instrumental factors in, in, uh, in instrumental factor furnace, furnace heating rate, recording or chart speed, furnace atmosphere, geometry of the sample holder, location of sensors, sensitivity of the recording system, composition of sample containers. We already discussed what kind of container of sample order we have to use, which are unreactive or not reacting with the sample in the investigation. Second one, the sample characteristics also uh, uh, affect the DSC curve. The amount of sample, nature of sample, sample packing, solubility of evolved gases in the sample, particle size, heat of reaction and thermal conductivity also affect the DSC curve. Now uh, by various examples we will discuss the application of DSC. For example, the determination of heat capacity, heat capacity of a polymer. A DSC plot can be used to determine the heat capacity. Heat, what is the heat capacity? Heat capacity is the amount of heat to be supplied to a given mass of material to produce a unit change in temperature. Unit change means delta change, delta T. DSC plot can be used to determine a heat capacity when a polymer is being heated. When we start heating two pan, <coughs> the computer will plot the difference in heat output of two heaters against temperature that is plot of heat absorbed by the polymer against temperature and from the graph you can see one side is heat flow other is temperature <coughs> temperature is along x axis and heat flow is y axis so then we, uh, we, from this graph uh, heat capacity of the polymer can be determined heat flow is the heat supplied per unit time t whereas the heating rate at temperature increase delta t per unit time heat flow is equal to heat over time mean q over t q is the heat t is time heating rate temperature increase over time 
temperature increase is delta t over t t delta t is uh, capital t for the temperature small t for the time by dividing the heat flow q t by the heating rate delta t over t it end up with heat supply divided by the temperature increase which is called heat capacity so heat capacity is equal to cp q over delta t by using <coughs> dsc we can determine the glass transition temperature of the polymers uh, this means there is a more heat flow there is increase in the heat capacity of the polymer this happened because the polymer just gone through the glass transition now everybody is familiar with the glass transition a uh, gradual or reverse transition in amorphous material from hard or relative glassy state to viscous rubber state is the transition is a glass transition and the temperature that is measured at this stage is called the glass transition temperature it is a reversible transition in amorphous material from a hard brittle state into molten rubber like state because of this change in heat capacity that occurs at a glass tra transition we can use dsc to measure a polymer glass transition temperature from the glass again you can see the temperature and heat flow xo and endo uh, as already discussed in this uh, dsc and in the former lecture xo and endo type of reactions so from the graph you can see the glass transition temperature the midpoint when it slip down and show a minima uh, show a minim <coughs> minima the midpoint of that minima is a glass transition temperature from dsc we can uh, measure the phenomena of crystallization after glass transition with this particular polymer polymer have a lot of mobility the wiggle and squirm and never stay in one position for a very long time wiggle and squirm is move up and down with small movement side by side as wiggle and squirm but when they reach the right temperature they will give off enough energy to move into ordered arrangement which are called crystal arrangement in a morphic state there is no ordered ordered arrangement while in case of crystal there is an ordered arrangement of all the atoms when polymer fall into these crystalline uh, arrangements they give off heat so it does not have to put out much heat to keep the temperature of the sample pan raising this rising this drop in heat flow as a big peak in the plot of heat flow versus temperature the temperature at the highest point in the peak is usually considered put, uh, to be the polymer crystallization temperature that is tc again from the block diagram uh, again the, from the curve you can see xo and endo heat flow is along y axis temperature is on x axis from the from the graph the maxima representative tc tc is a uh, polymer crystallization temperature also the area of the peak can be measured which tells us the latent energy of crystallization of the polymer but most importantly this peak tells us that the polymer can in fact crystallize the latent heat is heat absorbed or evolved during a constant temperature process is a latent heat energy as called the latent energy melting the polymer uh, if polymer is heated past a tc eventually reach another thermal transition called the melting when polymer's melting temperature is reached tm tm is a melting temperature the polymer crystal begin to fall apart that is they melt it comes out of their ordered arrangement and begin to move around freely that can be spotted on a dc plot after tc tc is a crystallization temperature tm is a melting temperature the heat which polymer give off when crystal is absorbed when reached at tm so tm also a uh, endothermic process this is a minima now all the properties melting crystallization 
put together both melting and crystallization involve giving off or absorbing heat in the glass transition temperature the change in heat capacity of the polymer because there is a change in heat capacity and there is no latent heat involved with the glass transition the glass transition is anchored order transition transition like melting and crystallization which do have latent in are called first order transition the first order transitions are the such transition the system either absorb or releases a fixed amount of energy per volume that absorb or release fixed amount of energy so in this curve uh, again a temperature is along x axis heat flow is along y axis tg tc and tm tm is a melting point tc is a crystallization temperature so tg and tm are exo endothermic while tc is the exothermic process from it can easily be seen from maxima and minima maxima is tc while the minima is tm and tg the tg is glass transition liquid crystals this is used in the study of liquid crystals uh, some material go from solid to liquid they go through a third state which displays properties both the phases this anisotropic anisotropic liquid is known as required crystalline state or mesomorphic state so uh, we already discussed about the liquid crystals the state of matter which have property between those of conventional liquid and of solid crystals is called the liquid crystal this is also called the mesomorphic state using dhc observe the small energy changes that occur as matter transition from a solid to liquid crystal and from a liquid crystal to anisotropic liquid uh from uh, using the dsc we can uh, also study the oxidative stability to study the stability to the oxidation of sample generally requires an airtight sample chamber uh various materials or drugs foods uh instructions with uh must be placed in a tight uh a tight containers why they are uh, the instruction is given because they react with oxygen from the environment and spoil and because and chemical changes are occurred as well as the microbiological changes occurred to check the oxidative stability of these type of material dsc can be used usually done isothermally at constant temperature by changing the temperature of the sample first the sample is brought to the desired test temperature under an inert atmosphere uh, usually nitrogen then oxygen is added to the system firstly the oxygen uh, nitrogen purges uh, sample is purged with the nitrogen then oxygen is passed to the system any oxidation that occurs is observed as a devi deviation in the baseline we get a baseline in the dsc curves if any deviation occurred so we can assess in the annulled atmosphere uh, the sample is and goes under oxidation the so dsc is an important technique for the oxidative stability of the samples under investigation such analysis can can be used to determine the stability and optimum storage condition for a material or compound that is uh, with the clear instruction this type of material must be stored in a tight container the material may be drugs may be food items or any other type of materials half of using dsc drug analysis can be done in the pharmaceutical industry it is necessary to have well characterized drug compound in order to define processing parameters for instance if it is a necessity to deliver a drug in the morphous form it is desired to process the drug at a temperature below which crystallization can occur there are various uh, analysis uh, various steps in the tablet formation capsule formation injectables liquid injectables small volumes and large volumes these are packed under a such environment the morphous state of the particular drug should be maintained if the temperature increased then their morphousness of that particular drug will be disturbed and that come into the crystalline form the drugs uh, loss is efficacy if it converted into a crystalline form a morphous drug has different efficacy crystalline drugs have of 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 a different efficacy even the drug molecule is the same so it depend 
uh, Morpheus and crystalline state of the drug. How is its efficacy to our, have shown efficacy to a patient? So those drugs which are to placed in amorphous form are processed under the temperature where their crystallization should not occur. General chemical analysis can also be done by DSC. Melting point depression can be used as a purity analysis tool. This is possible because the temperature range over which a mixture of compound melt is depend upon their relative amounts. With the impurity melting amount of uh, any chemical drug molecule compound will decrease. With the impurity melting point is decrease. Consequently, less pure compound will exhibit a broadened melting dip that begins at low temperature than a pure compound. With running with the reference of pure sample, a uh, pure compound and sample. If there is any dip that begins at low temperature, we can. Uh, determine the purity on the basis of the melting point. This is very important technique. DSC is important technique for determination of melt, melting point to elaborate the uh, melting point of any uh, molecule compound under. Yeah, food science, food science, uh, in food science, DSC also used in uh, for the analysis of different food items. In food science research. Uh, DSC is used in conjunction with other thermal analytical techniques to determine water dynamics. Changes in water distribution may be correlated with the change in the texture. Water is an important so <coughs> important in food items where if uh, uh, water quantity is more than the required uh, uh, amount in the packed food, then this creates the problem uh, in uh, the food items. Uh, to disturb uh, if a quantity of water is more then the food will be spoiled. To determine the distribution of water in the food, a DSC is a much convenient technique for determining the food uh, water dynamics in the food atoms. So then this is uh, also an important uh, instrument for determination of water dynamics in food sciences. So thank you very much. If you have any question, please put your question in the chat box. I will answer all these questions again. Thank you very much.